started out with my girlfriend slash friend leaving right after I'd gotten our kids three Xboxes. One was an accident, but it was right after Christmas on January 3rd. I kind of knew it was coming, but one of her kids gave it away accidentally. And I would have been okay with it had she given me any kind of explanation, but instead, I email her a few times, she calls the cops, wasting their time, um, uh, over emails. And after that, it was difficult to move past due to the lack of any explanation whatsoever. I didn't even try to contact her at, at all towards, until towards the end of the year, but uh, I was doing my best just to get over over it, but then the neighbor that moved in next to me turned out to be the nosiest busy busybody ever, who also lived with a narcissistic drunk master electrician, and her daughter, the subway felon, and the biggest mouth in town, which I tried to trust, but was so very wrong about that. Living on the end in apartment number four, I had access to the crawl space, and Judy was in apartment number two, which had the shared wall. That year was the absolute worst year of my life, and I called the cops four times, two times a non-emergency, and was given a criminal mischief ticket for taking back my own mother's fence, which would have never happened had my mother backed me up, like my dad should have backed me up the one time I called the police on David Sean Jones about his comment he made. All he would have had to do is simply walk up to their door, knock on it, ask them if the comment was made, and then they wouldn't have felt like they could get away with the crap that they did behind closed doors for six months. But, uh, let's see. What makes... What makes me the saddest is that I was the only one psychologically tortured over there and told my family about it every single time as it happened, like the one time at McBee's when uh, Deborah Star Stark uh, witnessed it out while I was blowing off the McBee's parking lot. They could have kept that video, but luckily I have a video of that drunk master electrician harassing me in the parking lot on my YouTube today. Um, every single time I came over to my mom and dad's house traumatized, wanting to talk, they just turned me away, didn't care, didn't, didn't do anything, didn't, I mean, lack of support is literally, like, like I have said since the very beginning in September, on September 12th when I ranted up and down the driveway. My support network sucks, and it still does. And the, that's, that's the saddest thing. And I just want to help people. I've created a website, wrote a book. I keep my promises, and I promise that everyone involved in this psychological bullcrap when I recognized the behavior, you know, I guess I behavior in my neighbor, Judy Rawlings, asking her if she heard me slam my freezer door and she said no. I didn't think nothing of it, but I said, okay, you know, but it only escalated from there and she never wanted it to be resolved. I thought I could trust Tisha. No, there's no trusting her. She, she lied to me so many times and left five messages uh, on my in, on my cell phone, which she managed to delete four of the five, which she knew that I had them on every hard drive of my computer, but one of the five I didn't even know I had. So someone was breaking into my apartment without my knowledge while I was asleep, and they added a contact to my one of my Verizon prepaid phones, and. They also used Taylor's name like almost every night as a button to keep me awake at nights. And for that six months, that was, you know, they literally tortured the hell out of me. And they're, they are literally, my family's literally lucky that I'm alive today.
because I've been suicidal ever since the first month of that bullshit, and Kyle was involved since the very beginning, and that's why he lied to my grandmother, and he lied to my mother. And I've proven that to them, but even that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what proof I showed to my family. They literally, their burden of proof is like so high or their heads are so far in the sand, it's ridiculous. They'd rather read about a, read a book that they don't practice any of the preachings of than ever try to understand or listen to what I have to say. So until then, because I don't think the truth, justice, or closure are you know, those should be like things that are impossible to get in this in this world, and I'm literally tired of it. You know, this is a trio who have made three statements against David, Judy, and Tisha, and even Kyle, all lied to my family, taking advantage of the fact that my family cannot communicate well with each other. And now that it's nearly been a year since this six-month assault behind closed doors. They are still not curious as to what happened to me. They say they believe me, but their actions say the opposite. You know, I've gotten so many eye rolls and so many, you know, shrugs and so much BS from my, both of my parents, it's ridiculous. But they also give me the silent treatment, which is another form of emotional abuse, and that's similar to gaslighting. It may not be criminal, but it's similar to it. And, uh, I've literally spent the past year researching the possible ways they were using to play voices in my apartment and also the possible mental health aspects. So I've researched it on both sides. But until I get the absolute truth, there's no, there's no more therapy, there's no more medicines that I'm going to try. I'm not going to do anything until I get the absolute truth. And the only way to get it out of those four people is a civil court battle, which is, and the scope is six months from July to December. I'm ready. I want to know if they are. Because the one consult I got was from uh, Vanguard and Cleef, and they said it was federal. And there are many federal cases open from what I hear in this county. Let's see. Uh, see, I, during the latter half of the year, I started talking to a psychiatrist. I tried, tried doing CBT, CBT therapy, and then I tried starting a different therapy and could not even concentrate on it because of Judy and Letitia's voices being played in my apartment or at my window. So still to this day, I do not know there was ever a follow-up done on the first police call I ever made, nor do I know if there was any kind of investigation of those people at all. And my cell phone records from that, from September to December, showed so many duplicate calls that I believe my SIM card was cloned. Also, Judy's son, David Rawling, works at AT AT&T, so that would have been an easy way for Letitia, which happens to be David's, David's sister, to get information on how to do something like that. Also, I had my Facebook hack for the first time in my life, and I've had Facebook since ever since it started, like back in 2007, by a WhatsApp number. And then I regained partial control, but ultimately gave up. But then I found someone had created another Facebook account with my Gmail address, which I also took temporary control of, and then did, and someone did too many wrong password attempts, and I almost lost, or I did lose lose control of that one as well. But then I let the the uh, officers know as quickly as possible that I did not have control of those accounts. And then uh, I'm I'm pretty certain they were watching me type in my passwords, but they stole my password books in order for plausible deniability because they were the only people within any. Uh, within range of whenever I was moving out the back of my apartment, getting my computers and stuff, I put my password books in the front of my truck in a trash bag, and somehow they disappear, you know, because I have to go in my apartment, I have to do all this by myself, without the help of my family, without the help of anyone, you know, and 
another strange incident, incident is uh, I was actually going to switch places with one of my friends and have him, you know, go in the back and have, wear a hoodie and uh, pretend to be me. And that day or night, Judy and Chelsea were literally standing right at the front of my parking spot whenever I pulled up in the apartments. Now, tell me that isn't odd. And another odd thing, Judy didn't call me one single time during that entire, you know, the time in my life. She didn't, you know, she wasn't a concerned neighbor. She didn't give a crap, you know, so all these things, if I was, you know, the parent, I would be very curious as to what went on. And since my parents obviously don't give a flying hoot, you know, what, you know, is bothering me and don't want to ask me myself ever how I'm doing, don't ever take their word for it. If they tell you something, just, you know, just ask me. Don't ask them, because they don't ever ask me how I'm doing. You know, so how could they possibly even know? And also, yeah, the Optimum. I had so many problems with Optimum, I finally figured out when I went outside like one time of the during that four month period and found out that the cable box had been cut, I reinforced the cable area and put a lock on it until the Optimum people could come out there. Now, all of this really leads me to believe that someone has cloned my voice, which wouldn't be hard to do, a small voice sample and going to the Eleven Labs website and uploading that sample, you know, it wouldn't be difficult to do. But um, the one uh, website I went to, you have to read 25 sentences and that's all it takes to clone your own voice, which is completely legal in a, for entertainment purposes, purposes, but if it's done, you know, anybody else's voice is cloned, that's illegal. Bluetooth cloning is illegal. SIM card cloning is illegal. Uh, video voyeurism is illegal. Even audio voyeurism. Even if she listened to any of my conversations over in my apartment. Because the few times that I turned my power off, I never heard a single normal noise. It was always dead quiet over there at the apartments anytime I went over there. That is the odd things that I... Just a few of the odd things that I noticed. And it all stems from... You know, the one time that Chelsea Dillinger, which is Letitia's daughter, asked me to air up her daughter Chevy's bike tire. And David made the comment, and that's where all this bullshit has come from. But, I mean, I'm, I'm like a network certified, A-plus certified, security-plus certified, server-plus certified, computer professional, Yet my mom won't take my word for it on, you know, unknown private things, not needing to be on the Starlink router. And I, I'm literally never going to stop wanting to get to the bottom of this, to the truth. That, should, that is what the justice system is all about, getting to the truth and justice for what they put me through. The police still have my journal, which is all the BS stories that they tried to put in my head night after night after night, and I started blogging about it, and I even sent Taylor a couple letters asking her, and a couple notes, just asking her, you know, to be a friend and to talk to me, and, you know, for closure, and if she was any sort of a decent person, she would respond, but she hasn't. So, uh, harassment charges against her and all the text me now numbers that she used to you know, harass me with and all this conversations that we had, it's all on my blog, Anybody can read them. You can see how short answers, and you can see me writing all these long explanations or long, you know, asking just for closure. And that shouldn't be too much to ask. Because had I gotten, gotten closure, then I wouldn't have been so vulnerable to their freaking psychological attacks, which they are, in my opinion, still doing using technology rather than the shared wall, and even back then at the apartment they were using some type of technology, but I don't know what kind because no investigation was ever done on Judy Rawlings and David Sean Jones that I know of. Uh, yeah, there's so much circumstantial evidence that I gathered from my room where I was always at, and
and so many odd coincidences that, and I'm tired of the lack of support, you know, and now, you know, a year later, you know, dad wants to talk. Well, I'll talk whenever he's ready to listen. I don't want to hear him talk. I mean, if, unless he wants to tell me what he thinks my problem is, then honestly, I really don't, you know, I don't want to hear his explanations because I want the truth, the absolute truth. And if he has a problem with the truth, then he's hiding something as well. And had they gotten me a lawyer in November, just in my phone records, then this crap would already be taken care of. But no, instead I have to, I've made five F FBI Internet Crimes Division complaints, two FCC complaints, one FTC complaint. Now they're even possibly harassing my aunt who got very emotionally distressed after one freaking phone or text conversation and FaceTime conversation. It really disturbed her. Can you imagine a year of that? All it took was one time for my aunt to get upset. And who was over there to, to uh, give her, to calm her down and to comfort her? Me, the one person who hasn't got any comfort from any one of my fucking family members whatsoever.